I want to I want to read this from the manual. This was the one I've been looking for. Um, the spell is Dagmentar. It's the wizard spell N. To cast a spell in this game, you hit C and then the letter of the spell you're casting. That's it. In other Ultimas, you might have those reagents you're supposed to cast, but not in this one. You just hit C to say you're casting and then the letter you're casting. But let me read you the fluff for it because it's awesome. These are great, great. Dagmentar is a powerful multi-pronged conjuration that will wreak havoc among thy foes in a manner worthy of its advanced rating. On the darkest night of summer, trap an owl old and wise, sacrifice the owl upon a stone altar, keeping only its eyes, enchant them with the following verse, Fendi Mentar Divi, Krembi Mentar Boni. When battle is nigh, repeat the stanzas until the heaviness of magic in the air becomes oppressive to the labor of thy lungs smash the eyes between thy hands thy foes will be struck with a savage blow of damage directly related to your intelligence fuck yeah wow. yeah <laughs> that's a lot of owl eyes to be carting around that is a lot of owl eyes to be that's carting. a big ask but hey <laughs> The cleric spells all have to do with some onk thing. Yeah. They like, wave over people and, and mm-hmm. what have you. But man, that, yeah, those owl eye things. <laughs> that's awesome. No, it is. And I kind of wish they made you do it. I kind of wish they made you go get an owl. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> because that yeah. sounds totally badass. And yeah. you know, you're hitting CN, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, there's, there's a little disconnect there, a but, disconnect. you know, it's, it's fine. The, I had a hard time. Uh, so, like, the the turns are on a timer. Yeah. So I had a hard time uh, do you, because the way this game is, the pacing is so weird uh, because of how you level up and stuff. I don't know mm-hmm. if you want to go into that, but basically what happens is you spend a lot of the game without enough magic points to cast most of the spells. Yep. Uh, so you learn and love like three or four spells uh, for your wizard and, and your cleric, mm-hmm. but then once you figure out how to level up, all of a sudden, yeah, it like jumps and you have access to every spell, right? And so you you have to either memorize them, or well, you pretty much have to memorize them because the turns pass in about I think five or six seconds, right? But if you know you're going to cast a spell, you can hit C and that'll trap it and then oh, you can go look it up oh that's true yeah, yeah. It, the Cause... game will wait once you start an action but it will not sort of wait for you to initiate an action it'll in like four seconds five seconds it'll just go next next yeah i don't know yeah. why in a turn-based game but it does so yeah, that that can be a, a little frustrating, and the only way to really pause the game is with the Z command, which stands for what Z stand for? Zatus. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Status. Stats. Stats. Stats with Stats. a Z. With a Z. Well, because that drove me I I feel like if you spent forty five seconds. Uh, you could you could redo the keyboard command so they make way more sense. All right, than you they got do. 45 seconds, buddy. I'm getting well, I'm getting it out. Okay, for one, S okay. is steel chest. Okay, and T is transact. Okay, which transact means to speak. Yep. Well, why wouldn't you do T for take and S for speak? It doesn't make any sense. Why is Z stats? Because G is get. So you don't need a take. Oh, jeez. I I, <laughs> I I can't argue. Your with forty-five that. seconds is up. She is get. <laughs> she is get. Why why are there two commands for getting chess? I guess because of the guards and shit in town. You have to yeah. actually steal it. Yes, but the, but that's stupid too. Because if you hit S in town, the mm-hmm. guards come after you. It doesn't matter if you actually steal a chest or not. If you get caught, the problem oh, you is. Can, if you steal and are stealing at nothing, I think it triggers as an automatic caught, which is bullshit. It should be the other way around. Yeah, I died doing that mm-hmm. a few times because I wanted to uh, speak to someone and I didn't have my handy dandy player reference card. So I guessed I guessed wrong. Questron at least put him on the screen. I always liked that. So you could just look. All 26 letters are used. Are they really? They are. 
Yeah, I mean, it it just the Z stats thing because that's the one you pretty much use the most. Well, you're gonna use it because um, it it can pause the game handily, but it also once you start going through, so you like hit Z. That'll do the typical like lock things in place. Nobody, none of the monsters are going to move. You're not going to see the turns pass. But if you start going through your character, like you hit Z one, mm -hmm. it actually pauses the animation, and that also pauses the whirlpool and the winds, so that like if you need a moment to go to the bathroom or something, you don't want your ship destroyed. This is a way to do that and not have to completely back out of the game. Another thing I noticed too, uh, you know, speaking about the the DOS version, like if you slow down and speed up the processor, or whatever it is, the cycles in the mm -hmm. DOS version, it does affect the the wind and and the uh, yeah the whirlpool, but it doesn't really affect the turn timer. So that's no nope. a useful bit of trivia. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, no, and I don't understand why the whirlpool and winds are on their own timer. Like that to me, I don't, I don't get that design decision. Yeah, like I don't see the advantages. Unless was, everything else is on the same timer. I mean, it could just be that he was experimenting with things. Because if you look at how he does, like each shop, each shop's mechanics on how you talk and buy and do stuff is completely different. Like if you go to um, a healer and say. Hey, I'd like to, you know, buy some healing. It'll say, do you want A, B, C, or D, or one, two, three, or four, or something like that for cure and raise and something like that. But then, um, if you go to a weapon shop, it'll ask if you want it listed. And if you go to a food shop, it's just like, how many, asshole? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It is quite confusing. And like, and the selling too, I had a hard time with, uh, just because there's no real central inventory management screen. So it's all done in the the stats yeah. screen, uh, which I I occasionally had a hard hard time dealing with, especially, and this is key because if you sell anything, it unequips all your shit. It, it does that, which if you forget to re-equip it after you're done, means you're getting pounded on. Um, weapons, you'll notice, but armor, you don't until you see your hit points dropping like a rock. Right. Weapons also don't matter because there's a bug in the game where weapon stats are all the same. Really? At very least on the Apple II version, I need to do a little bit of checking on the other versions, but my understanding is that bug made it through all the versions and was just wow. left there because it didn't unbalance the game. Even hands? I believe so, yeah. I, wow. I don't know. I, I want to double check hands since you've asked. Now that I've said that, I'm like, hands yeah. probably don't. So someone out there is going to be like, oh, hands don't. you got to be a weapon. So <laughs> <laughs> It's probably going to be me. <laughs> like, I'll go figure it out. To I, it took me five hits with hands to kill an orc. It took me two hits with a dagger. You lying sack of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah, something... I didn't know that. Like, I saved up. Like, I want to get the two hand sword. It's going to be badass. I got a barbarian. I need a two hand sword. No. I always did anyway because really, it's a, the weapons are a drop in the bucket compared to what you need to raise your stats. I did the math right. this time on what it takes to fully raise all the stats of a party, and it's ninety nine thousand six hundred gold to max out a party at about an average of sixty gold a chest. That the there's a few things in 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 that thing you just said that annoyed me about this game. <laughs> The leveling system is goofy as shit, and we've touched on it, mm -hmm. but basically what happens is you go to Lord British, and he raises your level, but the only thing that does for you is raise the maximum amount of hit points you can have. Yeah. Subtopic, that irritated me because I feel like he could do me a solid and just <laughs> fill, top me off, you know? Just fill, fill up my hit points before when you get it higher. Out also give you the hit points that go with that if you're Why full not? you should be full like he's essentially hurting you like have more higher health but you're gonna hurt to get it 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just to drive up business for that healer in the castle. In That's the castle. totally why. Yeah. And he's taking 10 four, off the top, you know. <laughs> he could give you a coupon or something. In 4, he brings you back from the fucking dead, and you can't yep. top off my hit points when you level me up. Anyway, anyway. the other thing that irritated, irritated me about that was the, the chests. Mm-hmm. There's so many chests in this game, but none of them have any gold worth mentioning in them i think they top out at like 60 so you'd like come into a room and there's like 20 chests and you're all jazzed but you only come out with like you know 1200 gold yeah no you gotta hope there's a weapon in the chests right and it's a pain in the ass to sell the weapons because you have to re-equip everything but you know it's fine it's it's 1983 role-playing game stuff it's it's nothing to be too upset about you you do get used to it. <laughs> I can't see you, but it sounds like there's something going on over there. Uh, there is. I've got I've got Bobbit attacks. Oh boy! Say hi, my little Bobbit, and then go with mommy. All right. <laughs> Bye, children. <laughs> children are the best. <laughs> yeah, they have no no regard for your no semi professional webcast yes our very professional webcast with nothing but polish and quality me yelling swear words and you talking about death lord for (laughs) two hours Uh, oh well you get what you pay for you get what you pay for here yep um okay i'm sorry i got distracted by my my i was bitching about how there's no gold in the chest no there's no gold in the chest you got to hope that a weapon is in there for you to make money like i love seeing a bow or chain armor in the chest that is beautiful because it means i actually made some some bank um also there's like no gold in the dungeons and there's no gold for combat you're not going to make a lot of money at that so if you want that ninety nine thousand six hundred, you have to raid towns like that's that's the only way you're going to make money within you know your lifetime Mm -hmm. to really get there i'm sure you know mr video game morality when you're like how do you get money for that i'm like well you got to go to this town (laughs) you probably were like is this Chris? Because <laughs> yeah, you're like, you know, no, I'm, I'm you're up and up, but you were like, you know, there's no guards in you. <laughs> right? like, no really? guards in you. Clerks are six XP a pop. Boo. <laughs> done and done. <laughs> and there's a decent Wait. amount of chests once you kill all the clerks. Cause sure. you don't always get a chest. So that is one thing. Like you, when you kill a creature, you always get a chest for it, which is thank you for that. But mm-hmm. here's a little guy hiding sort of out of the way, um, and they give you little clues like that. Only with exotics can you win. Okay, exotic, what really? And I know that has a lot to do with the size of, you know, the memory limitations on this. Mm-hmm. Um. I do want to say, like, there's not a lot of different tiles. There's, like, scrub, trees, grass, uh, stone, and walls, and then letters. But they really invoke a different sense of what each town feels like with only that handful of tiles. You is full of trees and it's dark and mysterious and you got to wander around to find things. Fawn is this city on this lake and it's islands with bridges connecting it. Montour East and West are these militant things. You walk in and you see lines of guards and walls all around. I'm really impressed with this game's use of minimal tools to invoke so many different feelings and vibes. And I, I feel like games after this had to rely on more varied graphics to invoke the same thing that this did with just like 10 different sprites. Yeah. It's really, uh, really well done in that regard. And like, even, even right away when you go into Lord British's castle, it seems like happy and jovial Mm because there's jesters everywhere and it's, you know, yeah. They're all dancing around doing whatever. Being Uh, jester things. Except yeah. for the two he's torturing in his torture right. chamber. That's the twist. <laughs> That's the dark side. It's like, uh, 
but I get it because like I hate jesters. Like I <laughs> why he's got him why he's torturing the shit out of him. <laughs> Oh but yeah, God. you unlock that door and you go in there. It's like, whoa. whoa. All hey, right, buddy. what happened here? <laughs> how, how you feeling today, LB? You you okay? <laughs> yeah, you torturing some jesters in there, buddy? Okay. Yeah. And there's like that kind of weird... Uh, it seems like a lot of these old games have kind of a weird skewed morality, like, you know, Questron, where you have to murder everyone in the castle to advance. To be granted a knight. Wow, you did really good killing all my guards. Welcome to my court. <laughs> and there's some of this, too. You have to, like, kill innocent people at times to advance the game. So there's one town. Um, I I don't want to give it away too much. Not that spoilers should matter on Ultima 3. Um, <laughs> right. If you're going to play it you've played it already so. yeah um if not stop the video go play it wait i you know we're this far in you should be super jazzed about it it's it's a great game um so in the town of dawn which is a hidden town that you gotta do certain things to get to in one of the corners there are three wizards and since you can only talk in the cardinal directions you can't talk at diagonals to talk to the guy in the corner you have to kill one of those wizards and start the town attacking you and everything else. But you just have to murder a guy in cold blood just to talk to a guy in the corner. You might think, well, I don't necessarily need to, do I? Yeah, he is the one who tells you where the equipment is you need to win the game. If you do yep. not do it and you have never played the game before, you don't have someone to tell you, you ain't, you, you're never going to find them. Yep. I think this is off topic a little bit, but I think the best way to play this is a combination of stumbling through it and having someone you can ask yes. for advice. That's like the perfect medium. Because if you just go read a, a walkthrough or whatever, yeah, you can say you beat it. But yeah. the real fun is just wandering around and finding the shit and being like, oh, I'm, I'm in this dungeon I can't get to the ladder. How do I get down? And then you got to look at what you have. Find a friend to play with who has a different style of playing games than you. And you guys will find everything very quickly and have a blast doing it. Mm -hmm. um, this really was from the era of games where it was a community effort. You and your friends talked about it and really kind of dug deep and looked into stuff. Aha! Attacking Mana Wars. Mana Wars! Nice! Awesome! Oh, they're cool looking. Yeah. Born to live forever more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. That, that fighter's that fighter's a brother of metal. His hands are in the air. Watch. Here they go. Boop. Yep. <laughs> they're square heads. They're square heads. <laughs> Crazy. I why, love it. Why are the fighter, ranger, and wizard square heads so much bigger than the cleric square head? I, I don't understand that. They must be wearing helmets. Oh, oh. I'll bet you're right. Just use your imagination, dude. Yep. <laughs> so that's the answer. That's the answer. Um, I want to go back to the manuals for a second, just for a couple quick seconds. Because okay. while I was going through my, my box, I found this. Boo, doo, doo, doo. Show that. Ultimate Was Warriors of Exodus Ultima 3. As thou dost venture forth across these mystical lands of Sosaria, many a fighter, thief, and even a mage will succumb to the evil forces of Exodus. Thou hast at thy disposal truly wonderful powers. Many among you will desire a greater knowledge of the realm before thy journey is complete. In order to prov provide for these wishes, I, Lord British, will supply the secrets of Caesarea for thy use. The secrets of Caesarea is a fully illustrated document. He's selling the fucking clue book. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to make that money. He's got to buy new uh, gauntlets or something. <laughs> some, I don't know. Uh, and I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to put for a second... I hate to interrupt the Mana Wars, um, but I'm going to put the display a bit. I'm going to put the intro image back up of the Ultima box cover. The oh. Demon, the Exodus Ultima 3. Speaking of Mana War, this cover is metal as shit. So, metal. so cool. It's badass. This is you my know? favorite Ultima cover, period. Hands down. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Do you know who drew the original? I'm history? about to show it up there. Ready? It's it's yep. everybody at home can see it now. This is what it was based on. Who drew it? 
Garriott's mom. That's awesome. <laughs> I know. I want that, that mom. Is... <laughs> yep. That's great. Mom. I love that his mom did it. Mom, can you draw me a demon torturing a soul in the pits of hell with monsters all around? Sure, <laughs> yes, son. Dear. If you eat all your vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I think he went out and had someone else. I noted who who did the actual final artwork. Who was it? Dennis Lubay. Yeah, he. I, and I think the only reason he did that is so he didn't have to say that his mom. You think so? Like cover. you liked Probably. it enough that you're like, it's just for the mom. He could have done this. This would have been enough. Yeah, I love it. I, I absolutely love this image. Um I'm glad he still has it. Like he found it a couple of years ago and posted this on Twitter. That's where you found out about it. And I had never heard of this before. So I'm so thrilled. Um, it yeah. makes me happy in a way I can't explain. Oh, it's so great. All right. Shut that back, back on the back to Ultima Ultima. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I wanted to make sure we didn't miss that because that's so good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, album cover <laughs> still thinking about man of war the box cover is yeah no, awesome. box covers you get it tattooed on your back <clears throat> i wanted to get uh put it on like the side of my computer back i was like i'm gonna get a linoleum thing and have it done and never yeah, did that'd be cool but there's still time there's still time i'm not dead yet what do you think about all the classes there's so many classes to pick from there are, and they're kind of a weird mishmash of like uh, how you calculate their spell points and if they can disarm and search. And I don't know, like most of them aren't really needed. Like all you need is probably a, some kind of ma or a, a major cleric, some kind of fighter, mm -hmm. and then whatever else you feel like. You like need the it, cardinal four, you know, thief, yeah. fighter, mage, wizard. Yeah, like you should take Barbarian just because it's awesome. <laughs> and they should wear leather for the duration. Well, there's the, the thing. Like once you know where to get exotics, the maximum armor doesn't matter. Because every time you play the game, you're going to go, whoop, exotic. Because you can get those right away if you know where they are. Yep. There's another thing I like about the game. The game doesn't lock you behind any real walls if you know how to get somewhere you can go right there you don't have to talk to somebody you don't have to you know figure out oh i gotta go talk to this guy and that actually lets this happen no just go just yeah. go um it allows you to discover things by accident and be ahead of where you think you should be and then maybe piece together why that's really a thing um mm -hmm. The only thing I'd say is for your front two people, make sure you have bows. Weapons yeah. don't matter in terms of damage, but they matter in terms of range. Definitely. Not having bows is agonizing mm -hmm. uh, just because of the turn-based nature of the combat. Yep. Uh, since we're talking about classes, should talk about races. Races determine nothing other than the max stat you can get, so pick carefully because it won't affect you at the beginning, but it will affect you at the end. If you take like uh, one of the creatures, let me just boop boop, pull it up here. Is it the manual that you have up? Yes. Yeah. Um, one of the few useful parts of the manual is that table that tells you the max stats because that's really what you're going to wind up with. Yeah. If you take an elf clerk, you're going to be limited to 50 magic points and you cannot cast the highest level spells. Yep. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you do. Um, yeah. Like that, that's another thing that's great about the game is like, like you played it with 150 hit points. Like you could, you, you can go back and play this game. Like yeah. I was thinking about doing an all barbarian. Yeah. That'd party be fun. Just to see if I could do it. Like just see how, how far I can get, what a pain in the ass it is. Oh, I bet it's a pain in the ass because you can't heal very fast. But I think once you find a dungeon with a healing fountain in it, it won't matter. Like, you go, you get your guys up high enough level, and they'll have enough hit points to get to that fountain, heal mm -hmm. completely up. Because I think you max out at, like, 25, 50 for hit points. That's enough. You don't need to heal when you have 25, 50 for hit points. You can right. blow through stuff. And, you know, when you've got exotics and your strength maxed out, you're going to be one-hitting everything anyway, so enjoy. 
Or yeah. am I, I'm killing everybody in you right now, aren't I? Oh, are you? Yeah. I thought I liked how how I didn't get poisoned constantly in this game because that was one of the things that I really hated about Ultima Four was mm-hmm. that you were constantly constantly poisoned. poisoned. Oh god! Now, you can get poisoned, but you can also avoid it very easily. There's only a couple creatures that poison you. Mana wars are one of them. I don't think sea serpents do. Uh, Bradle snatches and whatever the woobly things are, and then yeah. mains. I want to say will poison you. Yeah, one of those demony yeah sprite things too. Mm-hmm. But that's it. Other than that, you're fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's not as uh, as much of a death sentence in this one either because you can pretty much right away you you heal faster than the yeah than the poison or your magic points regen yeah. faster. Than if you've the poison, got a cleric, you can heal faster than you'll lose hit points from poison. So. It's never been a problem for me. Even at 150 hit points, it was never... It was a pain, but it wasn't a real problem. Um, the only real sort of pain for me was... Like, the there's spells to resurrect. Because you can be good, poisoned, dead, or ashes. Which is double dead. Um, Dead is only mostly dead. Dead is only mostly dead. The story lore is dead is your character's dead, but the soul's still nearby. If they've turned to ash, the ash has gone on to be reincarnated in something else. So when you reincarnate someone, you're killing someone else to bring the soul back into this body. Enjoy. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, if you take them to a, a healer, unlike wizardry... The resurrection will work every time. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, they turn to ash and it will either cost you more there or to cast the resurrection, the reincarnation spell will lower your wisdom by five. And you'll have to go back and raise that stat again and pay for that. So you're paying for it anyway. So just pay the healer. It makes those those handicaps make those spells worthless to me. You might as well have not put them in. When everything else has been so generous, you can't suddenly inflict pain in one spot and expect it to work because there's just easier ways around it. So you end up not using that and they might as well not be there. Yeah, agreed. Um, I do have a question as to why the cleric's mass death spell is cheaper than the wizard's mass death spell. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about the more advanced one, not Mm -hmm. Rapon. Because like... Yeah, you, you always have Rapond because it's like you have Rapond and Ponturi. Uh, yeah. Rapond is the wizard. A zero magic point will kill all orcs, trolls, goblins. Uh, Ponturi is the cleric's A undead, spell with right? zero, and it does all the undead, your skeletons, zombies, and ghouls. And it just takes a chance of destroying them outright. In the beginning, it's the only way your cleric is going to get any XP. <laughs> oh god that was so agonizing trying to get my cleric leveled up like just like push him into combat yeah <laughs> do your best buddy we'll or we'll, i'll just wait and yeah maybe you'll get the kick could you only get xp for a character if that character lands the killing blow on that monster yeah which i think is lame as shit like we're all involved you know it takes a village like right. uh, as we learned from hillary uh <laughs> So um, just, like, divide it up. Come on, you can do that math. You got this. You got this. Um, yeah. Oh, ship. Oh, yeah, the ships are great. So, um... Pretty generous imagination required to make that <laughs> into a ship, but whatever. But you get there. You get yeah, there. Yeah, it's got two masts, you got know. got two masts. Um, and brick. It's made out of yeah. brick. Yeah. As most ships are, I find. <laughs> Um, man, what was I thinking for the ship? What oh, I was bitching about, uh, something. Yeah. Oh, It'll well. come to me. Oh, clerk, clerk. Uh, oh, XP. right, right. Cleric XP. So like, if you like here, you see my clerk's still one. I've got other people already to two. That clerk's going to stay at one for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. when, I finally got him his magic points all the way up. He was at like level three and the other guys were around 10, eight to 11 were the levels. 
when I finished the game, my cleric was at like level 19, I want to say. And the other guys were, the fighters were at 10 and 14. Like <laughs> once mm-hmm. you get that mass death spell, things change quickly because you yes. attack a big thing like a dragon or something. You cast mass death and all eight of them essentially give those XP to the cleric. Yep. So he gets like two or three levels out of one good sized dragon run and and of course you're burying the lead here because as we previously said the levels don't fucking matter anyway don't matter. especially if you're not talking to british no yeah if you're not talking british it's like okay i i care but i don't you know it's essentially what what you're doing is turning money into stats or levels yeah and if you're a 1970s Dungeons and Dragons player that makes perfect sense to you because that's what the game used to do. Any money you got back to town turned into experience points because that was the nature of the game was to go tomb raiding and then bring the money back and that was a successful adventure which earned you XP equivalent to your treasure. Mm-hmm. So it's not really a far off concept for this era of gaming, but nowadays it seems weird. It just it doesn't really makes sense especially because most of the gold you're going to get is from stealing out of one of the towns and that's not really that's not as hard as say going and fighting a dragon right but it's it's literally riskless it's way more profitable and super profitable yeah and zero risk yeah that that was a little weird and it and it's it's weird to me because like you level up at at the shrines by throwing money at them Mm -hmm. uh but you wind up with really skewed stats that don't make any sense because like you're so used to things incrementing together Together. when you level up like okay you know now all my stats are going to be plus whatever Mm -hmm. uh so to, to to go from having you know 10 magic to 70 mm-hmm. like in one one trip that's seems strange but on the other hand it feels awesome yes because all of a sudden you're this huge badass mm-hmm. well and that's one of the things that while we're talking about raising your stats so you got to go to the shrines to raise your stats i told you it's ninety nine thousand gold to raise your stats each character can only carry 9,000 gold, which means at, or 10,000. So at most you're carrying nearly 40,000 gold because each is 9,999. So you're almost there, but not quite. Mm-hmm. Um, that means you're going to have to make minimum of three trips to Ambrosia if everyone's maxed out and you don't necessarily want to max them out. Because if you go past 10,000 gold, the counter rolls and you lose all that gold. Yeah, if you you J join your gold to the wrong person at the wrong time, like goodbye money. Goodbye money. It it went into computer land. It's not a thing anymore. So you, you basically can shut your computer off and go back to whenever your last save was. I want to talk about saves and something else in combat too. So, like, the game auto-saves every so often, and I think going in and out of towns is one of the times it saves. I'm pretty sure on that, Uh, like 99%, but just in case I'm wrong, I'm hedging my bets here. And it saves whenever a guy dies. So if a guy dies in combat, your game just saved. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind as to how far the gap is. The other thing I want to say about combat while we're looking at it, while we're talking about it, you can't run. Right. Yeah, that took me by surprise at first. Like, what do you mean, no? <laughs> yeah, I'm like on the edge of the screen, like, get out of here. <laughs> no, it's no. Not, a, not an option. You're here, buddy. And, <laughs> and there's there's times in the game where I found myself like, like I really didn't want to be in combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause there's, this pissed me off in a big way. There's one town where there's like this section and it's full Great. of chests. Gray, yeah. Yeah, and you go down there, and you know, I was just checking it out. Like, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna S steal the chest or anything. Wow. <laughs> You're gonna G get the chest. <laughs> I was. But I still had plausible deniability because I hadn't done it yet. Right. <laughs> but you get engaged in combat totally at random, 
or, well, it's not at random. I mean, it definitely happens, but you don't expect it. And you don't see the guy, I don't think, do you? Well, no. So what happens is is the room is built kind of like a W. And you come down the middle section of the W. And as you come down to the chests, which are down here, this guy who's been up in one of the other prongs starts following you down, blocks you off, and attacks you. And right. there's no warning, no notice, no anything other than you walk down an alley and got jumped being lured by gold. And on one hand, that makes perfect sense. That's what. That's that. fine. That's fine. The problem is that now all the guards you are have on your no shit. choice. Right, <laughs> the guards come. You can't do anything about it. Can't like do anything I, about it. I, I I did that twice because after the first time, I was so indignant that it happened <laughs> that I I came back and did it again, killed the guy, and I'm like, I didn't even steal his chest. Yeah. No. I was killing him, and no. the guards still killed me. I'm like. Yep. Fine. Shit what happened town. To, <laughs> we're in Trump's America. Like what happened to Castle Doctrine and stuff? I was just defending myself. No, well, see, you were defending yourself in his home. Oh, that's his home? Sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know. I thought it looked it, I didn't think it looked like a W, I thought it looked like a skull. Kind of, I guess. But the yeah. way you walk in, it's yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I like everybody falls for that trap the first time they see it because like, ooh, chests. What's happening? Why are the guards mad at me? <laughs> yeah. Well, you just want to like He's check it exploring. out. Exploring. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the whole point of the game. The but ga- whatever. Yeah. Ninety percent of the time, the game rewards you for exploring, and every so often, it slaps you like that, and you're like, ah. Oh. Yep. I'm still gonna explore because ninety percent of the time, you reward me for exploring. Um. Yeah. I'm just looking through here. Food. Oh God. Well, let's talk about food. Let's talk about food. So we have this discussion, I think, every time we play a role-playing game. Like, what's up with the food? What's up with the food? It's just like an early game gotcha, basically, because it's so cheap that it's not really a concern, like, money-wise to run out of it. It's just like one more thing to keep track of. Yeah. It's something to manage to keep you from, I don't know what, because yeah, you're right. It's sort of an early game gotcha. It's, it's, and we were talking about this with Mark when we were interviewing him, where I wanted to say most games had this, but as we started talking, uh, Questron did, and sort of that family of games did, and Ultima does, and Might and Magic does, Fantasy doesn't. Yep. Uh, Wizardry doesn't. Bard's Tale doesn't. What about Deathlord? Deathlord <laughs> does. Don't make me regret asking. Uh, but it's different. Um, so, like, and this is one of my problems with a lot of the games we just mentioned in terms of their food. Like, I'm carrying 400 food on Eryx up there. Mm-hmm. What does that even mean? Like right. how how long is that? What is what is what does four hundred food mean? And how do I carry four hundred of it? Is it four hundred pounds? That seems like a lot of food. Um, Between and, your owl eyes and your food, like that's right? a wagon full of shit. You got a carry wagon around. carrying around. And Deathlord has a hundred food, and it's like one a day it goes down. So you've got a long time. And then when you are, it sort of says starving, and there are spells you can cast to create food there are things you can do to mm-hmm. kind of mitigate it and it is because death lord is a exploring into the frontier game a lot more than ultima is with 64 by 64 you're never far from a town right only if you've just been neglecting your food do you ever get caught with your pants down like oh i'm in the bottom of a dungeon and i forgot to carry food with me and i mean it's happened to me but it's not a yeah. rewarding situation. Right. Right. It, it just feels like one, one more thing that you got to yeah. dink with. And, and like, I thought maybe, well, I'm going to segue into another thing that irritated the shit out of me. <laughs> the, the wind system yes. on the ships <clears throat> where you just get stuck and you're just sitting there forever waiting for the wind to be the right direction so you can move. Like, that's not fun. But I, what I was thinking was, well, maybe it's this, like, uh, 
you know, story that he's trying to tell where you're on a ship and it, the winds died down and you, you're running out of food and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know, like food's so cheap and plentiful that it just never really happens unless you're total space on it. Yeah. No. So I think it, I think it fell flat. Mm-hmm. It's a mechanic. Questron, I, I found myself dying of starvation more often, I think. Well, and Questron and Ultima 3 both have monsters. Ultima 3, 4, all of them do really have monsters that steal food. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think there are any in Death Lord, which helps. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the mechanic. But I also, there's there's a nostalgic part of me that doesn't want to lose it either. Yeah, I get that. And, and like, it's, there, there are moments where you're like, oh, shit, like, food. I got to get food. Yeah, I forgot, you know, yeah. and that's kind of cool. Or you have to, like, hand it around because one person has it and the other mm-hmm. ones don't. And, you know. I think the uh, problem with food is there's no heroic payoff. There's no moment where food has ever led to heroism. You know, right. right. Having your weapon break and you defeat an ogre with your bare hands is something like, you know what I mean? Like you'll have a story to tell. I starved to death on a ship is not a story to tell. Um, yeah. And unless the game's going to let you start eating your party members, it's really never going to get to an interesting mechanic. <laughs> which, which you would never do, right? No, you're never. Ever, all, we play these games together and I'm always pro cannibal and you're always so against that. I don't understand it. Like you'll <laughs> wait, lay waste to a whole village full of vendors for no reason, but, Oh, but don't eat their flesh. Look, I'm going to tell a completely unrelated story here for a second. You don't say, I don't like Chevy chase movies. Okay. And I don't like them because to me, they're not funny and they're not funny because this shit happens to me all the time. I don't find escape and relaxation in the things I do every day. That is a completely unrelated story. And I'm what? moving on from that. <laughs> what Chevy Chase movie are, are you living in? Fletch? Uh, Christmas Vacation for absolutely oh, sure. Oh, uh, gotcha. But yeah, most of his movies are. like that. Most of the vacation and a lot of the stuff like that. When I watch his brand of humor, it sort of goes. Yeah, like I've known you for a long time. Your life's nothing like Fletch. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, anyway, that has nothing to do with cannibalism. Um, just an unrelated story. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like it. Like, you like it? All right. I've never, I've never compared my life to Chevy Chase movies before, but yeah. now I'm going to. Now you should. You I should. get what about the vacation movies, though. That stressfulness. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the movie Mother yet? Not yet, but I want to don't see oh if you if you have anxiety issues at all do not see it if i have anxiety issues yeah (laughs) if you have oh man that thing stressed me out i couldn't be out in public after that thing oh man anyway anyway okay moving on from food and cannibals and things i would never do (laughs) in Uh... real life or otherwise uh tools gems keys powders torches yes this those were the first things that like there, there's a few like big jumping off points. And that was the first one is finding that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gems are awesome. Gems it's are like awesome. overland map. Yep. Wherever you are, even, you know, dungeons, islands, a- anywhere that is beyond useful in this game it's so handy the gems and powders are things i feel like some mechanic of them should be in every one of these old school rpgs because it it allows you to trade things in game and do in-game grinding in a different direction that doesn't involve you having to like do these other things you might not be good at if you're really good at getting money you can get around mapping by buying gems if you're really good at mapping save your money yeah, you can you can do your mapping and you're fine. Um, There's a lot of maze like aspects of this game, and if you mm-hmm. don't like that, which I I don't, yeah, the gems are like a get out of jail free card. It's like oh. uh, it, it, it's like a problem solver. Yeah, it's like and, Rapond. Right. No, and when you're Just high enough up, it. like we were talking about, where you've got enough money because you've been raiding a certain town over and over, 
You just have a stack of them. Oh, I'm somewhere new. Let's see what I got to do. Boop, boop. Yep. And it's great because it gives you the points of interest, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't tell you what they are. So some of them are conflict. Some of them are cash money. Yeah. Some of them are win. You don't know. Which is a a good game balance because if they told you what they were, it would would be boring. Mm Mm-hmm. But if they didn't tell you where anything was, it would it would suck. And it holds the screen up until you're ready to move on and everything's Very paused. Nice. So if you want to draw the map down or you want to do everything else, you can go to that. Then I go boop, boop, and up. There's a cleric or a wizard spell, I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, that also does that. So, um, Yeah, I don't remember what it is. But yeah, the, those are... Cleric it, Vita, yeah. Yeah, it's torches... Super, the torches are way better than the light spells, so that's which I don't understand, but yeah, yeah. And the wind, like there's places where the wind blows out your torches, and also your light your spells. Light spell. right. Okay, okay. Well, whatever. I get it. Yeah, you want my torch out? Like okay, okay. Uh, yeah. The powders, I, I I haven't really used much. At, really, I haven't used it at all. But the gems, man, those are awesome. Powders are fantastic for like doing full town raids when you want to get around guards and don't want to fight them all because you're not quite there yet, but mm. you still want to steal everything in a town. Yeah. That's a good use for them. Or you're finding yourself, hey, I'm level three and I just had a bunch of dragons attack me. Right. Oh, and keys. That's the other one. Keys. Because uh, every door in Cesaria has the same exact lock. I'm going to pause this for a second because I want to point something out when we're talking about doors. Yes. So there's a door in the sort of lower left of British's chamber. Mm -hmm. And then up above him spells out the word British. Doors and eyes are exactly the same thing. An eye is a door in this game. And I want to say there's somewhere where there's like a word written and you can unlock up to unlock the eye and take the eye out of the word. But that's why all doors are east west because they're eyes and you might not even think about it until you've been playing this game too much and all of a sudden you're like wait a minute (laughs) yeah i never noticed that that's great um yeah the other thing i want to say about the powders keys gems torches is in this game they're exactly what they should be they're bundled into the game they're tools in the game that you use with game currency to make your game easier or harder to play if this was a modern game, those would be, you know, microtransactions. Oh, it's agonizing that you're right about that. It's so gross. And like, yep. Like a dollar ninety nine to get that map of Ambrosia. I I'd, I'd throw down. People on would it. throw down for it. People pay ninety nine cents to get a gem. Yeah. Like, oh, I want five gems because, or I, you know, I want, you know, a ten pack of gems because they're gonna sell them in ten packs. Mm-hmm. And there's eight levels to the dungeon, so they're gonna sell them in ten packs. And, you know, you'll spend 10 bucks to not have to map the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, that's awful, but you're you're right. I'm totally right on that. Mm. It's so gross. It makes me a little dirty. <laughs> makes me a little dirty realizing that. Yeah. Speaking of EA earlier. Yeah, right? They would eat that up. Um, yeah, what else do we have to talk about? We've... Uh... We've been all over the place We've here. been all over the place. I'm just kind of going through our notes, talking about stories. Uh, you have complaints about fighting horses. Right. Well, it's not a complaint. Like, I like that when you get into combat, it says conflict. And mm-hmm. then it says what you're fighting. And I just, for some reason, I thought it was funny that it said conflict. Horses. <laughs> like, what, what did what, I do to these horses? <laughs> what dispute could I not resolve with these horses that it has to end in conflict? Like it, I, if it said battle, that would be that would make sense. Yeah. Or like, uh, the best is conflict floor. Conflict floor is pretty good. Um, yep. Yeah, that's at the end of the game in the final castle. Uh, there's another one that's kind of good in here, and you'll see it in a little bit because I'm um I'm going to kill Lord British in this video. Oh, nice. Um, but while we're waiting for that, uh, tap house and. Blah, 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 blah. He was petting horses. Um, God, what was I going to say? Oh, that they keep the humor to a minimum. Like, in Ultima 4, there were so many joke characters, it distracted me from the game. Mm-hmm. And I felt that was 
kind of a bummer. But before I said that, what was I going to say? Uh, Ambrosia, horses. To get horses in Ambrosia, go to Ambrosia, get near the horses, negate time, step on top of the horse, board the horse, move away. You now have a free horse. You can't take it That's out of Ambrosia, but you awesome. got horses in Ambrosia. Um, so most people don't know that. Uh, the tip from Mark about this game is if you need a boat, if you're like, God, tick, tick, I want to I wanna get a boat so I can do boat things, which is another one of those opening up points of the game for you is when you get your first boat. Yeah. Um, here in Lord British's Castle, there's a boat. And what you do is you get on the boat and you go provoke one of these guards or something so that they come and attack you at the boat. While you're on the boat, you let one of your guys die. So bring on some level one new guy that he's going to get sacrificed and deleted from your roster. We should talk about the fact that the roster has 20 people. Um, yeah. And then crash the game. When you reload, you'll be on your boat outside of Lord British's castle with three guys alive, one guy dead. Free boat. Yep. Then you just kick him out of the party, add your superstar back in. Yep. You're good to go. Continue. Yeah, that's a, a neat tip. Mm -hmm. no, I, that's... I love stuff like that. Yeah. And that's one of the things I don't feel bad about these old games doing stuff like that, because they were so clunky and so weird and so hard to manage. And they were meant to be not just storytelling things, but chess games against the developer as to how can mm -hmm. you kind of work this to make things happen and play within the game rules my rule had always been um like no clue books no anything like that the only thing i will allow myself is anything that the game actually lets you do so like this to me is perfectly acceptable that that trick because it's within the game mechanics i know it's not the spirit of the rules but so are a lot of other things like magic you know wind blowing out your light spell so right. or gremlin stealing all you know half your food and you're like when i kill you i should get it back right you didn't like eat it on the spot yeah right and if so you haven't digested it already i'll cut it out of you i'm not that proud <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so it's been halfway through a gremlin that's fine yeah it's still i'll edible. eat the gremlin i don't care yeah but you know i don't like chevy chase movies um <laughs> uh anyway um one of the things i think is really interesting about this game is we've talked part of what's taken so long is we've had to dissect all these different small systems and this is what i miss about old school games is there's no one sort of giant overarching super system that you really got to learn and maintain it's lots of little teeny systems that all lean on each other and create something bigger by doing it they all sort of support and stack and you end up with all of them like you're trying to conflict moving around on your ship and fighting wind with running out of food and getting to a dungeon by learning how moon gates work and all of these little things are little puzzles that you figure out one thing at a time and you can figure out in any order but once you figure out one of them it makes other things fold into it and are more interesting and are more you know, it becomes a bigger game mm -hmm. just by that sort of virtue like combat is just attack and pick a direction but it still was more satisfying than some of the other combat systems i've played in other role-playing games yeah and i don't know why it's it's dirt simple but yeah it's 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 just like rewarding yeah you know it feels you feel cool when you're doing it yeah the the balance is right the um everything like that uh get him i'm i'm intrigued by what's happening here because i i didn't even know that there was really a ship here available yeah. what are you trying to lure guards yeah Oh, that's right. Can't gotta do that. Um, one of the things I have in my notes is you can see how Lord, little Lord British cared about stats in his games when I'm fighting dragons and demons at level three with a first level cleric and less than ideal equipment, and I'm winning. Yeah, 
the, I I never had a hard time with combat in this game. Not I mean not never, but most of the time it's pretty easy, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. But it's okay because I don't feel like the point of the game is combat. No. It's exploration. Yeah. And but the combat's satisfying. And the exploration is just deep enough to be satisfying without being a burden. Um, one of the Rich. last clues. There he comes. He's coming after you. He's coming after me. Um, one of the things I want to say. So like in the end of the game, you're talking about floors. And you're attacking mm-hmm. floors. And they look like the floor. And the whole field is floor all the way up when you're getting attacked by floors in Exodus's castle. If you are standing on a chest. Okay, here it comes. We're going to just let this go. Oh, here it goes. How could you? Easily. <gasps> Lord British is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> How many were there? <laughs> I think it's British's. But there should be an apostrophe. It's a contraction of British. Lord British is destroyed. He owns the destruction. <laughs> no, it's British is with the. Oh, British apostrophe. is destroyed. I see. Yes. So, are you king now? Is that how that I works? I think that's how that works. I think I'm king of Caesarea now. Huh. That's awesome. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. No. So the boat, uh, basically, whenever it hits an enemy mob, there's a fifty percent chance it's destroyed. Oh, is that how that works? That's how that works. Awesome. So what happens if you get engaged in combat with Lord British? You die. Yeah, he's... it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty much invincible. He is invincible in actual combat. So you can go up, you can attack him, but you're going to lose. Um, hmm. I think in Ultima 1, you can just flat out kill his ass. But yeah. in uh, starting in like 2 and 3, that's not an option. Yeah. Um, I love that they carried on that tradition all the way to Ultima Online when someone killed Lord British. Like, <laughs> it's the first time he ever appeared in the game or whatever. It was really early so in, and he had an invincibility flag that he forgot to turn on for himself. And someone was like, I'm just going to try it. Like, let's just see what happens if I... Uh, that I got him! Hero. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Lord awesome. British. Oh. So, yeah. Um... Anyway, what I was saying is in the last dungeon, you've got those floors that are coming at you. If you're standing on a chest, you're fighting on a grass field instead of a floor field. So all of the tiles stand out and you can see them. So you got to kill one floor, step on the chest. Oh. And then you can see the rest. And chests will block all monsters. Like you can have a dragon coming at you, but if there's a chest between you and it, it's gonna just hang out buddy it's it's not gonna try and go around can't it's, do it it's like oh there's this chest here i guess i'm stuck it's it's one of those things that's physically impossible like talking to someone diagonally talking to someone diagonally can't do that or can't. around another person around you another sh- person can't nope it's, it's not impossible. how this world works which is again why i don't mind doing some of these tricks because some of it's bullshit and yeah might as well enjoy it right yeah all right. Anything else? I think we covered it. I, I'm feeling, I hope, dear God, I hope we covered it. I feel like we touched on <laughs> pretty much everything. All right. Um, I'm going to pull it up here then. Next month, we are doing Alone in the Dark. Yes, like the first survival horror game I ever played. Maybe the first one they ever made. Second. Second? What was the first one? Project Firestart. Oh, Project Firestart is the first survival horror game. It's on the C64. We will probably be playing it next year. Cool. Yeah, um, I'd like to. Yeah, because I've never gotten all the way through it, and I'd, I'd be interested in going back to it. And now that you're getting a little more warmed up with Vice and the C64, I think it'll be easier for you to get into. But yeah, Alone in the Dark. Uh, I've already played a couple minutes of it. It is old. It's showing its age. This will be an interesting discussion next month. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's a good Halloween it game. Is. I, I remember it being quite spooky. It's very Cthulhu and feel. So there's yeah. a lot of potential there. I haven't gotten very far into it. 
Um, I'm giving it a little bit of grief because it's early 3D. And so there's some parts that are just comical. But with any survival horror, the first 15 minutes are not the scariest minutes of the game. It True. builds. So, yeah. like, I'm not, I'm totally reserving judgment still, but um, it. I think we will have an interesting discussion next month. I, yeah. I'm interested to see if it holds up to your memories. Since yes. this is one, one where of the rare you games know that it. I played that you haven't. Yes. So that'll be fascinating to me. All right. All right. All right. Then see everybody next month. Thank you. Bye.